Welcome to this segment of Going Deeper with Pastor Jim. What we're doing simply is taking Sunday's message from the weekend before and finding an area where we really didn't have time to go in to the deep depth that we wanted to and just digging a little bit deeper. This past Sunday, we started a series that we're calling Stop Running Scared. And we talked a little bit about this idea of, of we can have the, the spirit of fear and walk in the spirit of fear, or we can walk in the spirit of having a love and power and a sound mind. I'm not going to re-preach the message. You can get that from the int- information at the outro of this segment. But there is, I thought it would be worth a little bit of our time to dig a little bit deeper into the context of the key passage so that you can have that framework as you think through this entire series. The passage, of course, is 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Paul is writing in this passage to his spiritual son Timothy to help him deal with the fact that Paul is in prison at this point and and he's facing the potential uh, and ultimately an executioner that would come and take his life. I don't know if you can picture how Timothy might have felt in that moment uh, knowing that his spiritual father is in that predicament, but I would imagine that it was incredibly difficult. In fact, difficult not to be overwhelmed by a spirit of fear. What's going to happen to my spiritual dad? Now, understand, we don't know a great deal about Timothy's biological father. We know that he was a Greek, apparently was not a Christian. He was raised uh, at the feet of his mother's faith and his grandmother's faith, the uh, the scriptures say. And so we don't know a great deal about his dad, but we do know that Paul really became his father figure, his spiritual father. And so what's happening to Paul is bound to have a huge emotional impact on Timothy, the son. And I think that's why Paul starts this segment of his letter to Timothy at a very personal level. Verse 2, he says to Timothy, my beloved son, I thank God as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day. He's saying, son, no matter what I'm going through, I haven't forgotten you. I need you to know that I know how you might be feeling, and my thoughts and my prayers are with you. He goes on to encourage him in verse 4. He said, I'm greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. Son, I know this is a painful season for you, and I love you, and I miss you like I'm sure you miss me. But then having established that kind of loving father dynamic, he then goes kind of disciplinary dad on him. He kind of goes, you know, instructional dad on him and and gives Paul some very important instructions that are critical not only to Timothy at that point in his life, but they're critical to us when we're finding ourselves uh, being captured with the spirit of fear as well. In verse 6, he says, this is why I remind you to keep using the gift that God gave you. In other words, I know you can be overwhelmed with fear and you can be overwhelmed with the, the emotions of the moment of what's going on, but don't forget, God gave you a gift and you're supposed to be using this gift and we affirmed that gift and you're supposed to be serving others. Paul knew that, that the emotions would create a tension for him and it creates a tension for us when we find ourselves overwhelmed with fear. But don't forget, he says, son, you've got some gifts and you're supposed to be using them. He goes on. That's the context now. That's the setup for what he says in verse seven, when he says it comes down to it, son, you've got a choice. In fact, you've got one of two choices, but as a follower of Jesus Christ, you really only have one choice. And that's where we get verse seven. God did not give us a spirit of fear a spirit that makes us afraid, overwhelms us with fear, but instead he gives us a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. In other words, your choices are to be overwhelmed by a spirit of fear or to be empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. Hear me, guys. One of Satan's favorite weapons to keep us from using the gifts that God's given us is to make us afraid to use them. And he'll use all kinds of fears to get us to shut down and hold back. Uh, And we'll be talking throughout the series about some of those specific kinds of fears. But for now, what I want you to hear me say is what Paul told Timothy in verses 8 and 9. Do not be ashamed to tell people about our Lord Jesus Christ. And don't be ashamed of me in prison for the Lord. But suffer with me for the good news. God who gives us the strength to do that saved us and made us his holy people. That's not because of anything we did ourselves, but because of God's purpose 
and his grace. That grace was given to us through Christ Jesus before time began. You hear what Paul's saying? He's saying, Timothy, I know this is a difficult time. I know this can be an overwhelming time. I know the spirit of fear can overwhelm you, but don't forget that before the beginning of time, before any of these circumstances kicked in, God knew you were going to exist. He planned you uh, from your mother's womb, laid out your life, and gave you all the gifts that you're going to need in order to accomplish what he put you on this planet to do. Don't let current circumstances prevent you from walking in the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish what God put you on the planet to do. So he, he kind of goes daddy on him a little bit with some instruction and I hope you're hearing, if you're struggling right now, that he, he's kind of going daddy on us too. You, you can allow the spirit of fear to overwhelm you and, and block you from stepping out and doing the things that you know God's called you to do or the things that you were gifted to do. And Paul says, don't let it happen. God knew from the beginning of time who you are and who he was, you're meant to be and what he called you to uh, accomplish and what he purposed for you and he knew circumstances would come and go but that purpose of God stays the same. He then goes back and bolsters Timothy's faith with his own testimony in verse 12. He said, I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed to him until that day, the day that he comes. Paul says, Timothy, I want you to hear me say, I know what I'm going through and I'm not overwhelmed by the spirit of fear and I don't want you to be either because God made me on purpose just like he did you and he's using this for good in my life just like he is you and one day we will celebrate when Jesus breaks that eastern sky to gather us together and take us home. God bless you guys as you consider uh, all the options in life. And when you find yourself overwhelmed with fear, don't forget that dynamic between Paul and his son Timothy. And remember that God loves you, has a purpose for you. He doesn't walk, want you to walk in a spirit of fear. God bless you.